اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغزوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله نزل عسن الحديث كتابا متشابهاً مثانية تخشير منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله ذلك هو الله ذلك هو الله يهدي به من يشاء ومن يجد لله فما له من هذا ما ننسخ من آية أو ننسها نات بخيل منها أو مثلها ألم تعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير كيفية علومش داني جي شان دارت شهد استاسماني از فاہی حق شکیدہ دل میں میں یہی ہے ہر دم تیرا صحیح فچومو قرآن کے گرد گھومو کعبہ میرا یہی ہے جیسا کہ ہوا پلم ہو چکا ہے خاک سارا کی خدمت میں قرآن مجید کی تعلیمات کے فضیلت کے بارے میں معلوظات پیش کرے گا اس موضوع کی اتنی اہمیت ہے اتنا عظیم و شان اہم موضوع ہے کہ میری بسات اور اوقات سے بہت بڑھ کر ہے قرآن مجید کی تعلیم کی فضیلت ثابت کرنے کے لیے اس عظیم خدمت کے لیے خدا تعالیٰ نے اس زمانے میں حضرت رسول کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے روحانی فرزند اور قرآن مجید میں فنا اور قرآن عشی کے عاصق صادق حضرت مسیح معود علیہ السلام کو معمول فرمایا ہے اور حضور علیہ السلام خود فرماتے ہیں یہ حضور کا تحریر ہے کہ خدا نے اس رسول کو یعنی حضرت مسیح معود علیہ السلام اپنے بارے میں فرما رہے ہیں یعنی کامل مجدد کو اس لیے بھیجا ہے تا خدا اس زمانے میں یہ ثابت کر دکھلا دے کر کے دکھلا دے کہ اسلام کے مقال پر سب دین اور تمام تعلیمیں ہیچ ہیں پھر حضور فرماتے ہیں کہ مجھے پھیجا گیا ہے تاکہ میں حضرت صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی کھوئی ہوئی عظمت کو پھر سے قائم کروں اور قرآن شریف کی سچائیوں کو دنیا کو دکھاؤں However, that person who has a covering over his eyes cannot see this. At this time, I'm going to speak about this topic of the Holy Quran. Now, what I want to say is that the teachings of the Holy Quran, in comparison to all the other teachings of the world, are much greater, are much better, and are much superior, and are the best of all teachings. But before I present this topic of the superiority of the Holy Quran, a question does come into the mind that all the previous teachings that have come, all those previous messengers who brought those previous books and teachings, they were sent from that same God. That same God who sent the Holy Quran also sent those previous prophets and all their books. Now that same God sent the Holy Prophet Sallallahu as well. Now, if that same God is that same God who sent all these books and sent all these messengers, then how can we say that those books before and those teachings before are not perfect and that this book, the Holy Quran, is perfect? How can we say this? 
First of all, what I would like to say is that all the previous books, all the previous teachings that were descended by Allah the Almighty, not a single one of those books that came before the Holy Quran have stated that that book is either perfect or that book is superior to the other books that have been revealed. None of the books that came before have made this claim. Secondly, the amazing thing that we must see is the following, is that not only have they not said this, but they have practically, they have testified, they have admitted that they are not perfect. Now, thirdly, those previous books also have prophecies entailed in them that after this book, another book will come in the future, which will be the most perfect book, and that, that teaching will be the perfect book, that book which will come in the future. So therefore, to perceive that those books have been insulted or that those books have been mocked or ridiculed is not correct at all. In fact, those previous books that came, they say themselves, they admit themselves that we are not perfect, we are not complete, and they give a prophecy of a book of a messenger to come in the future, which will be the most superior message, the most perfect message, and the best of all books. Now, this is the topic regarding which Allah the Almighty says, La nafarriko bayna ahadim bir rusuli that there is no difference between any of their prophets. Now, in terms of the truth, all the prophets are equal. But in terms of the rank, Allah the Almighty says, Fadalna baduhum ala baad, that we have given someone rank over the other. Now, when we compare the previous teachings, there are two circumstances that come into view. First of all, the, uh, the p previous books, they believe that they are not safeguarded fully, although some, their followers think that they have been safeguarded. Now, the teachings have such things in it. If we look at it, we see that those books are not complete books, and they are not perfect books. Hadad Khalifa Tomasi I has a statement, and this comes into my mind so many times when I think about this topic, and I would like to express that statement of Hadrat Khalifa Tul Masih the First. Hadrat Khalifa Tul Masih the First was a great scholar of the Holy Quran. The Promised Messiah alayhi salam, has also praised Hadrat Khalifa Tul Masih the First greatly for this. Hazur, the first Khalifa, said that Allah the Almighty has given me this strength that from three words of the Holy Quran, I can reject all the other allegations against this was the amazing thing of him now first of all is the excellence of his knowledge secondly is the excellence of the holy quran that in just three words every person who rejects the religion i can go and compete with him and debate with him and rebut his allegations now when I looked further, I found an even more amazing statement by the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him. <clears throat> the Promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wassalam, peace be upon him, states, I will read out these verses of poetry of the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him. Now the Promised Messiah, alayhi salam, says that, the Holy Quran, in every aspect, in every angle, is the most superior. First of all, people thought that the Pro Prophet Moses' staff was unique. But then we found that every single word of the Holy Quran, every single word of it was a miracle, was an excellence, was something unique. Now, the fact is, this is not just about the whole chapters, about the whole pages. The Promised Messiah said every word has some miracle, some uniqueness in it. This is so incredible. The Promised Messiah said, I'm speaking about the very words, individual words of it. Now, the Promised Messiah said, in another verse of poetry has shed light upon this topic. <clears throat> The Promised Messiah salam, says regarding the Holy Quran that every word of the Holy Quran, now the word harf has been you here, which means word. He said there are many things. There, this Quran has taken our heart away completely. Then the Promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, peace be upon him, states in every aspect, every little word and letter of the Holy Quran, you find a miracle in Now, what the Prophet Messiah is saying here is something quite amazing. He's saying that this knowledge that the Promised Messiah has given is a miracle itself. That is, Allah revealed miraculous knowledge to the Promised Messiah and the Promised Messiah then subsequently spoke about the miracles of the Holy Quran. 
Now, the Promised Messiah alayhi salam, also uses a word in his literature, which I will speak about later. The Promised Messiah alayhi salam, states that if the New and Old Testaments, if it tries in its entirety and in every way, that all the statements about the oneness of God are pre combined in it and they are compared to the Holy Quran. And the Promised Messiah alayhi salam, states that they are not even comparable to Surah Ikhlas, that small chapter. And the Promised Messiah alayhi salam, <coughs> has said it so proudly that if you look at the subject matter of Surah Ikhlas, that is, then even that entire New and Old Testament combined cannot compare with the oneness of Allah presented in that small subject. So the Promised Messiah alayhi salam, has presented the most miraculous excellence of the Holy Quran. Now, when I was writing my notes for this speech, and during that time, <coughs> I also was reminded of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, where he says, Man kara harfan min kitab Allah. <coughs> that that person who read even one word of the Holy Quran, one harf of the Holy Quran, then Allah the Almighty would open up the doors of rewarding in heaven. And similarly, it keeps on going on that you cannot even envisage how much person reward has been given. It says that what is a harf? What is a word? Now, Alif, Lam, Mim, it says, is not just a harf. Alif is one harf, Lam is one letter, which is a harf, and Mim is the third letter, which is the harf. And there are so many blessings contained in just these individual harfs or letters that we cannot even count them completely. Now, after presenting this opening statement of mine, I will now present some arguments to everyone. But as I have said, that no book previous has ever claimed that its teachings are perfect. All these teachings are better than others. All its teachings are the greatest of all teachings. It is only the splendor and grandeur of the Holy Quran that in many places, in different chapters, it is said that it is the greatest of all books. Now, it is right that there are Christians who say that, and there are even Jews, and there are other people of different religions who say that our teachings are the greatest. But the fact of the matter is that what does the book say? The book does not say that. The people of the religion say that, but the book does not say anyway that uh, we are the greatest of all books. Now, the fact is that the book is not claiming this, but the religious followers are saying that our religion is the greatest or our book is the greatest, whereas the book does not even say that. So this is something which must be pondered on. The two verses of the Holy Quran that are recited at the beginning Amongst those verses, I have chosen three words. In this, Allah the Almighty states, Allahum, Allahu nazzalul asanul hadith. That Allah the Almighty, He presents a subject matter very fervently that the Holy Quran is the best of all hadith. Now this word, asan, which is excellent or beauty, I'm going to speak about this word. Now, there is a claim here that this revealed book is the best of all revealed books. This is the claim of the Holy Quran, and this is our claim. But where there is a claim, there is also arguments to support that claim. Now, when it says that this is the best of all books, the beautiful of all books, then you also have to perceive that there are other things which are beautiful as well. But in comparison, this is the most beautiful. Now, if it just says that, God forbid, everything else is wrong, everything else is nullified, nothing else should be looked at at all, then this would be as if you say that somebody who is blind says that, I can't see anything, but the Holy Quran does not state this at all. What the Holy Quran says is the following, that there are other beautiful teachings, but whilst those beautiful teachings are present, there is an even more beautiful teaching. So this is how the Holy Quran presents its greater beauty. The Holy Quran sometimes actually takes names, for example, of the New Testament, of the Old Testament, but sometimes it speaks about generally. In the Holy Quran, it says there are nur in it, there are guidance in it, there is mercy in those previous books. So the Holy Quran does praise those previous books as well. But the Holy Quran says it has better nur, better light, better hadayat, that is better guidance and better rahmat, which is mercy.
Now, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, has explained this in one of his verses. It is quite incredible and quite strange indeed that the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, is poetry about the Holy Quran. That is a miracle itself. You will not find a verse of poetry like that anywhere in the world. The promised Messiah, alayhi salam, said that we must thank that merciful God who gave us the Holy Quran. Now he here he uses this word which says that now this is the new flower that has come before us. Now the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, according to the time, he said that time would had not come for the flower to blossom. It was a flower which had not blossomed. So the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, has explained those previous books in a most beautiful way. But when it says about the Holy Quran, it says it is like a most beautiful flower from the garden of flower, that flower which gives the best scent. Whilst those other scriptures, they were like flowers, but this is the most beautiful flower, the flower which is open and blossoming. It is not just a flower that will just negate everything else, as I explained to you in the verse of poetry before. That there is a spring of a new era in every single one of its worship. It is always a flower which is blossoms and luscious for all time. So the Promised Messiah alayhi salam, has presented this subject in a most excellent and beautiful manner. And the Promised Messiah alayhi salam, has compared those previous scriptures in this manner. The second word that has been used, which I am going to speak about and which I have chosen, that is in the second verse that I recited where Allah the Almighty states that when some law is cancelled or somebody forgets that law, for example, at certain times people forgot their law, then Allah the Almighty said, Na'atin bi khairin minha. Then when this occurs, we give a better book. We give something which is greater, which is more beneficial, which is more useful. We bring such a law to the world. This is what Allah the Almighty states. Now the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, peace be upon him, he has again explained this in another verse of his poetry where he says that, And the pro promised Messiah alayhi salam, says, we have found something which is even greater. He uses the word khair, which is good. And the promised Messiah alayhi salam, has expounded this most beautifully in this verse. Now, this khair, which is used, we, is also, we see this in Surah Fatiha. Ihtina sirat al-mustaqim, sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim. That guide us in a straight path, the path of those on whom thou hast bestowed those blessings. Also in Surah al-Nisa, Verse 70, with this verse continues, that for those who believe in Allah and those who believe in the Prophet, as a result of that, Allah the Almighty has given those people the blessing of Prophets. For example, the Siddiq will be born, the Truthful, the Shaheed will be born, the Martyrs, and also the Saleh, the Righteous. This is in Surah Al-Nisa, Chapter 4 of the Holy Quran, in verse 70. So this is that khair, this good which Allah the Almighty has spoken about. Now, in continuation of this, in relation to this khair, this goodness, in Surah Al-Nur, there is Ayat Istikhlaf, that whenever prophethood will commence, then as a result of this khair, this good, then a, perpetu a perpetual blessing will be bestowed upon us. The Promised Messiah alayhi salam, has again shed light upon this in a different color, and this is a most interesting exposition. The Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, said that if you want to see the excellence of any teaching, then that should be reflected in the lives of those who follow those teachings. Now, if there are spiritual excellences, there are moral excellences entailed in that teaching, if a person who follows those teachings, if his life testifies, is a true reflection, a true demonstration that in comparison to those previous teachings, those followers who came before, those people in their lives are better people, then this is an easy way to determine the truth of that claim. The promised Messiah, peace be upon him, said that amongst those excellent followers, you, f you should find excellent followers which you cannot find the like of in any other religion. This is the words used by the Promised Messiah, alayhi salam. Now, f uh, further, the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, has mentioned five kamalats or five excellences which should be born as a result of following their teaching. He said, first of all, you should see some khawariks, that is, certain things which you do not find in anybody else, unique and special things. For example, Allah li may listen to that person, may communicate with such which should support such people. These are those five things which are mentioned. Now, no other religion claims to have these five excellences, but unfortunately, the Christian, Christians, which is the biggest religious denomination in the world, 
they believed the Sharia, the law, to be a curse. So they can never compete against this. That is, those people who Allah the Almighty accepts his prayers, Allah the Almighty communicates with. Now, according to all the other religions, this sequence has continued. You cannot speak to God anymore. So further, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, said, we have seen thousands of people who have come into the religion of Islam. And they have come to provide an example. And I, this humble one, that is the promised Messiah, speaks about himself, that I have come to present this example. So the speaker said that the promised Messiah has presented another very strange but very amazing comparison. He said a very senior and very elder priest. He here the word bazurg does not mean a very holy person. Here bazurg means a person who is elder and who thinks himself as very big. The Prophet Muhammad said that if a very senior priest is compared to an ordinary Muslim in comparison to his spirituality and the light he has within him, if you compare a very senior and elder priest in comparison to his acceptance of prayer, his spirituality and light, in comparison to a poor Muslim, you'll find that he's, the Prophet Messiah challenges that even find a small amount of that light found in that poor Muslim. He said, then we will accept all of the truths. Now look at this large claim by the promised Messiah, peace be upon him. Here, I would like, it's, ne it's necessary for me to explain the following. That what does it mean when he uses the word a gharib Muslim, a poor Muslim? Now, from what I understand from this, in the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has instructed the following. That the beginning of Islam was from prophecy. And in the Nashat e Saniya, that is the revival of Islam, when Islam will stand up once again, then that will also be in a state of ghurbat or a state of poverty. That is, those people at the time will be poor people. They, those people will be who migrated. That is, like for example, most of you here have migrated. So when we say uh, gharib, that is poor, we say those people who leave the world for the sake of Allah, not those people who may be beggars, etc., but it's those people who willingly leave the world for the sake of Allah, and they know that the biggest treasure is of Allah. So the Prophet Messiah said, if you compare such a such type of gharib person, such type of inverted commas, poor person, a Muslim, with this Christian senior priest, you will find that there is no comparison. Now when the Prophet Messiah has used this word mislaha, Mislaha means similar to, for example, for example, those people who forget the previous scriptures. Then what happens when people forget those previous scriptures? And Prophet Messiah believe, brings, said that Allah brings something like that or something better. Now, the Prophet Messiah said that if it was something that was equal that was brought, if the law was the same or the teaching was the same, then they are equal. Then what is the concept of being greater than the previous scripture? The Prophet Messiah has explained this in the following way. And this is the most splendid explanation. The Prophet Messiah says that just blood becomes milk. That is, the teaching is the same. Now, there were some things in the previous scriptures which needed to be carried on. But when the Holy Quran has preserved those, then they were like raw or red blood. That is, for, at the moment, they had not progressed. But then Allah the Almighty, or through the Holy Quran, has converted that into blood. And it says similarly, the Old and New Testament, those commandments which have been carried on to the Holy Quran, they were just commandments, but they became wisdoms. So what happened is those commandments were in those previous books, for example, the Bible, but they did not provide arguments in support of them. But the Holy Quran provided arguments in support. So in this way, it, they were blood in the Old and New Testaments, and they became milk. Because those commandments did not have supporting proofs, but they have proofs in the Holy Quran. So the promised Messiah salam, said they became hikmats or wisdoms in the Holy Quran. So this is Allah's special way. And this is the way that Allah brought the Holy Quran and how he proves that the Holy Quran is superior to all other books. This is how he proves this. Now, in the end, Now, I will present an extract of the Promised Messiah, which are a compendium of all the arguments which you need to prove the superiority of the Holy Quran over all the other books. The Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, states that, remember, 
that to prove the truth of any religion that it is from Allah to prove that it is from Allah then in its doctrines in its teachings and in its commandments it should be so complete so perfect and should be so free of any defects and errors that a person cannot even imagine that how did this come into existence there should be no shortcomings no flaws and no errors in that teaching this is how you can prove it is from Allah it should be such a teaching which is dominant over other religions that is in other words there is nothing equal to it just as the Holy Quran has claimed itself the al yawma akmal to lakum ladinakum wa atmam to alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum islam adina the promised messiah alayhi salam said in this verse that this day I perfected your religion for you and gave you the name islam etc is that Allah revealed a perfect law to the Holy Quran and the time of the Holy Quran was such that in that era where the perfect law was needed and the perfect law was ready to be revealed. So this claim that the Holy Quran is made of being a perfect book was the right of the Holy Quran and it was the right time as well. And no other divine book has made any claim like that. As is seen by those who see that the New and Old Testaments, they are devoid of any claim of the like that they are a perfect book. Because in the Old, Old Testament, Allah the Almighty said, from amongst your brother, I am going to raise a prophet and I am going to put words into his mouth and that person who does not listen to his words that I will call him to account so it is very clear from this verse of the Old Testament that if it was enough just to believe in the Old Testament then why did it say that there was a prophet who would come in the future and there would be no need to listen to the Old Testament. And there, but then why does it say that? But the Injil as well, the New Testament, does not say anywhere that it is a perfect book. It is instead very clearly admitted that there are many things which needed to be said, it, but you could not endure it. You are not ready for it. But when that future person will come, he will present all of these things. Now here, when the Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, he has said that my teaching is not perfect. He has drawn attention towards a future messenger. Similarly, Hadar Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him, also accepted that his teaching was not perfect. And he indicated that the time is not now for the perfect teaching to come. But when that future reformer or messenger would come, he would present that perfect teaching. The Holy Quran unlike the Old and New Testaments, does not give reference to any future book. In fact, the Holy Quran says that this book is the perfect book. That this day I have perfected your religion for you and gave you the name of Islam and called you Muslim. So therefore, the only book which is claimed perfection, completeness, is the Holy Quran. And just as the Holy Quran has stated, the Holy Quran has also demonstrated that practically and in every light. And the Holy Quran has done this by presenting such a perfect book which neither the Torah, the Old Testament could present, and neither the Injil or the New Testament could present. So therefore, in order to prove the truthfulness of Islam, a major proof is that according to his teaching, it is the teaching which is dominant and overcomes all other religions. And no other religion can compete with it. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Islam Ahmadiyyat Now we are going to listen to a poem Mukaram Bilal Raja Sahib who has come from America he is going to present a poem Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Rabi Rahmatullah Taala ke Natiya Kalam mein se chand ashar pesh Rahmatullah Taala ke Natiya Kalam mein se chand ashar pesh this is a poem from Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Rabi Rahimahullah Ta'ala's The Fourth Khalifa's Writings. <coughs> the most honored chief of mankind, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. <coughs> 